This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Good morning, Rabbi Sai. <clears throat> Today, of course, is Yud Gimel Iyar. So Yud Gimel Iyar is Erev Pesach Sheni. So in honor of Pesach Sheni, Haba Leinu Lataiva, we're going to uh, learn a little bit about the, what is the meaning, the origins of Pesach Sheni. There's a Mishnah, Masech the Psachim, that says, Ma bein Pesach Rishon Lasheni. What are the differences between Pesach Rishon and Pesach Sheni? Harishon, Asr Baal Yerah Baal Yimatzei, the first Pesach, you cannot have Chametz. Vahasheni, Chametz u Matzah Yimai Babayis. You have both, you have Chametz and you have Matzah. Harishon, Ta'on, Hala Ba'achilasai. By Pesach Rishon, you say Hala when you eat it. Vahasheni, Eino Ta'on, Hala Ba'achilasai. Pesach Sheni, you do not say Halal, does not require Hala when you eat it. Zevazeton halal ba'asiyasan, but both require halal when you shecht it. Okay. V'ne'achol and sli, you eat it roasted, al matzah, umeroyrim, v'doichin es ha-shabbos. Pesach sheni zoch ha-shabbos. Now the question is, is Pesach sheni a yomtif, or is it not a yomtif? Is it a yomtif, or is it not a yomtif? So we don't have to look too far. All you have to know is it's a Rashi on Chumash, okay? If anybody tomorrow wants to know, is Pesach Sheni a Yom Tif? So you forgot Rashi in Parshas Bahaloischa, Paraktes Pasuk Yod. Pesach Sheni, Matzah, V'chametz Imay Bavayas, V'ein Shem Yom Tif. It ain't a Yom Tif, okay? That's all you need to know. It's not a Yom Tif. So the question is, do you say Tachnan? Well, Shulchan Aruch does not bring down any custom of not saying that Tachnon on Pesach Sheni. Is there a source not to say Tachnon on Pesach Sheni? In fact, there is. And that is the Hagois Yad Shol on Yoradea Simon Tuf Aleph. So if you want to know what is the source not to say Tachnon on Pesach Sheni, it comes from the footnotes of Rav Yosef Shol Halevi Natanzan, uh, who says, that look in the Gemara and Pesachim and that Pesach Sheni does not require lina. You don't have to stay overnight in your Shalayim. Doesn't need halal when you eat it. Why? Because it's not a yomtiv. And Rashi says that explicitly. Okay. It only applies to those who miss Pesach Risha, right? Right. Otherwise, right. you don't have to do anything. Otherwise, you don't have to do anything. Okay. Right. Okay. Now says the. Rav Shal Alevi Natanzan on the last line, Va'akal Panim, after Eno Yomtuf, Mikamakam Kivan the Shachtu by HaPesach, since they Shachtu the Karim Pesach, Ein Maspidin, you don't give Hespid, Ve'ein Mesanin, you don't fast, Ve'ein Oymrim Boy, Tchina, you don't say, Tachnon. So even though, no, it's not a Yomtuf, but according to Rav Yosef Shal Alevi Natanzan, you do not say, Halal. Now, the Chida in the Sefer Avodah HaKodesh, in the Mora Be'etzba, writes, even though it's not a Yom Tif, it does have added Kedusha, it is Ktsas Simcha, he says in Ois Reish Chaf Beis, Yoyim Pesach Sheni, Yarba Simcha Ktsas. On Pesach Sheni, we, we add a little bit of Simcha, Ki Kadosh Hayam. So the Chida acknowledges the fact that there is a degree of Kedusha and extra Simcha when it comes to Pesach Sheni. Now, something very interesting. If you ask most people, you take a poll, I would venture to say, go on Main Street, take a poll, why is Pesach Sheni called Pesach Sheni? I would say a thousand out of a thousand people would say, Pesach Sheni, of course, it's the second Pesach, right? It's the second Pesach. And in fact, that's not the reason why it's called Pesach Sheni. Second chance, not the... Why is it called Pesach Sheni? Because it's Pesach of the second month of the year. Nisan Iyar. Not because it's the second Pesach, not because it's the second chance. Look at look at number seven. The Sefer Hatoida. Yo Kitav Yom Zenik or Pesach Sheni. Al Shem Ha Pesach Ha Korev Bechoydesh Ha Sheni Hu Iyar. Okay. Now there are, there's a Maimer Chazal. There's a statement of Chazal that Pesach Sheni was in the Zchus of Yosef Hatzadik. And in fact, who was the person? who these people were Tameh because of, right? People, people could not bring the Pesach Rishon, why? Because they were Tameh, right? Vi Anoshim, Tameim, Lenefesh Adam, Lama Nigara. So, who were they? They were Tameh with the bones of Yosef. Look at number five. Vi Anoshim, Asher Hoyu, Tameim, Lenefesh Adam, Vien Adam, Ela 
Yosef. Shenemar Oyel Shikain Ba'adam. The, it was referring to the Mishkan Shiloi, which is referred to the oil of Adam, and there and that oil is called oil Yosef. Did it, did it take them a whole year almost to take care of Yosef? At that point in time, they were tame with the bones of Yosef. No, but say that it took them almost a whole year to, to take care of Yosef. No? Why the whole year? Well, because Pesach Risha was still in Mitzrayim, and now Pesach Shani. It's a year later. It's a year later, almost a year later. Why a year it later? It's a year later. Well, yeah, let's take take the Chumash. Let's do the Chumash. No, no, it went out, out, and the following year... I know year. that's what the Chumash said. I was just asking. You were asking. Oh, you were asking. Yeah. So the answer is, yeah. Okay. following year was the only Pesach Risha. Okay. 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 So, so... That's good enough. So, okay. Now, Rabbi say, there are those who eat matzah on Pesach Sheni. So the question is, are you obligated to eat matzah on Pesach Sheni? Is it a halacha to eat matzah? Is it a mitzvah da'iraisa? Is it a mitzvah da'abanon? Is it a chumrah? Is it a takhanas neviyim? Is it a minhag? And should you do it? So, we have over here the Sefer HaTaydah brings down a minhag that's definitely widespread in Kalal Yisrael. That yesh noigim lechol b'yoyim zem matzah lezecher karban ha'pesach shenechal al ha'matzos. However, I found the tshuva from the river voice of Ephraim, who is Ephraim uh, Greenblatt. He asks like this: Neshalti mi yedidi. Rav Ephraim Greenblatt writes: I was asked from my friend Rav Nechemia Kibble. Me'ein aminok shalich lematzah pesach sheni. Where does this minok come from? Vihine Yadidi Hagoin. Who does that stand for? Rav Chaim Kenievsky Shlita Kasavli. Rav Chaim Kenievsky. Who, if you want to know what the source of anything is, he's the man to ask. You know, he'll tell you is there a source, is there no source? He knows Kala Tarakula. You know, recently, my mother asked me, she said, when she was a kid, she looked around in Shul. And when people would say, Vikara Zel Zeviyamar, nobody went, Ch -ch -ch. And now all of a sudden, everyone's going, Bang, bang, bang. Who made that up? Chaim Kievsky says, Shouldn't do it. There's no source to do it. It doesn't say anywhere that Vikara Zel Zeviyamar. It was made up. People made it up, and then everybody does it. All you need is one guy to start something, and then, Karze El Zevi Yamar. Yeah, it fits in. No, 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 you can't say that. A minog is something that has halachic basis. If there's no halachic basis, it's not a minog. It's Somebody started it. No, a minog is not. No, a minog is based on halacha. But somebody started No, that doesn't matter whether it's somebody started it or not. It's not a minog whether someone started it or not. A minog is something that has halachic basis, based on a shita. Based on opinion and halacha. If it's something that people do and it doesn't have a basis, that's not a minog. No, no. So that's what Reb Chaim Knievsky is saying. This minog, look what he writes. Kasav li, ze minog chasidim, v'etzleinu einog. We don't do it. So if you're, it's a minog chasidi, if you're, if you're a chasid, so then you do it. If you're not a chasid. So the chasidim have some halakhic basis for doing it then. I don't know. If you're calling it a minog. When you call, yeah. I will take it at, take it at face value. Ze minog chasidi. A chasidish a minog. What does that mean? That if you're chasidish, you should do it. Or if that's your minog. I'm not, I'm not disparaging any minhagim. I'm just reporting the facts. If you want to know, if someone wants to know, on what level is eating matzah on Pesach Sheni, it's minog chasidi. It's a wonderful thing. You just know there are dairaisas in this world. There are drabanans. There are tekanas neviyim. There are chumras. There are minhagim. There are minhagim that have early basis. There are... There are Svardik minhagim, the chasidish minhagim. Not disparaging, I'm not putting down. I'm telling you, I'm just letting you know, for your own educational purposes, that's what Chaim Knievsky said. Um, I, I'm just listening, Bukhara Zel Zevi Amar, he happens to say there's no basis for it. I just thought that was very interesting. Something that, look around, almost everybody's doing. And there are things that are brought down that nobody's doing. You know, the Mishnah Burma brings down, when you say Kaddish, 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 you're supposed to look upward. Oh, yeah. And uh, nothing brings more nachas to Hashem than... So there are things that are brought down in halacha, and for some reason people don't do I don't know why. And there's some things that are not brought down, and they're like... Uh, they're... Uh, 
They're color exactly. They're colors, colors, colors. Okay. Any event, let's speak a little bit about the meaning of Pesach Sheni. What is this concept that you have a makeup for the Karim Pesach? You could ask. There's no makeup for any other myths on the Torah. If you don't take your lulav, we don't say, Oh, no problem, Tesvav Cheshvan. We'll give you a special makeup day, you'll shake your love and ask her. Oh, you didn't sit in the sukkah? Say we chose Karif. Uh, yeah, but what? It's not say we chose Karif. Okay, but there are no makeups. There are no makeups no, in I'm Judaism. The other ones that you mentioned, don't I? Okay, still, still. It, it, exactly. Karif just means you better do it. But if I, if I didn't do it at the right time, there's no makeup. It's not, it's not a baseball game. Baseball games have, uh, you know, rain makeups. Judaism, there are no makeups. Usually we say, Mu'uva Shena Yachaliskain, right? Let's say a guy didn't say Shema in the morning. Can't make it up. He's, he's down and out. He, ha- he always says, Tomorrow is a new opportunity. But what is the Indian that for carbon Pesach you have a makeup? What's the con- concept behind it? Well, if we, if we, if we say mm-hmm. that the people who ask yeah. were Tame because of the Asmon Shose, and we were instructed to take care of Asmus Yosef, yeah. so their reason for not being able to bring the carbon passage on the first was because they were Osek the Mitzvah okay. by Kashmar. So then good. Right? That's even so, so there's a reason for them in that case. So you should say, say you know, first of all, it didn't happen because normally you say Osek the Mitzvah, Pater Menah Mitzvah. Normally you say if you're busy, so you're exempt. So, the so if there's anything, if there's anything that you should not have to make up is if people had a valid excuse, right? If now let, let's say a guy decided he's not going to bring Karm Pesach, he can't make it up. It's only someone who had a good excuse. So if he has a good excuse, so he doesn't need to make it up. And why? Why do? You, why the thirtieth day of ER? What's significant about? Excuse me. Why the fourteenth day of ER? What's significant about that thirtieth day? So Rabbi Yaakov Emden, who he said the Chassam Sofer said about him that he's a a Navi, thank you, that he's a Navi. So he tells us some words of prophecy over here, which by his own admission, he says, God told him. Okay? V'tam Pesach Sheni. The reason for Pesach Sheni. Shehukva bi'ir. Gilu li shamayim. They revealed to me from heaven. Right? Not everybody could say that. <laughs> they revealed to me from heaven. You know why? We have a rule that when the Jews took their matzah out of out of Mitzrayim when did the they, they did not they were not given food from Shemayim until a while later the matzah they took out of Mitzrayim lasted for 30 days from Yodalid Nisan until Yodalid Iyar this is what you heard from Shemayim no that that is already known from Chazal that's a known principle, that's a known principle. The man didn't start coming out is that We'll see in a minute. Because the, the Chazal say that the Mun lasted for 40 years. Now, lasted for 40 years? How's that possible? They went into Eretz Yisrael, Tesvav, Nisan. Right? That's when the Mun stopped. The Mun didn't fall when the day they left Mitzrayim. The Mun fell 30 days later. So that means it wasn't 40 years. It was 40 years minus 30 days. So Rashi and Chumash says in number 12, that the cakes that they took out of Mitzrayim, the matzah they took out of Mitzrayim, that tasted like man for 30 days. Okay? So that's the source in Chazal. That and why the, do we need the man? They could have had uh, that continuously if it tasted like man. It only lasted 30 days. So when they went out the Kippazon, they were... Did, did the matzah they had lasted? Yeah. Or Kaddish Baruch Hu, well, they took out enough to last. I don't know. They, whatever they baked, that lasted yeah, that's for... That's hard to understand. They, they take 30 days worth the matzah on their backs. Yeah. With, with everything else they were taking. Something. Whatever else. they took, it lasted for 30 days. But Rabbi said, we, one second, we see from there that the matzah they took out of Mitzrayim lasted for 30 days. So conceptually, Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim was Nimshach for 30 days. In fact, uh, Rabbi Yaakov Emden writes, that night on Tezvav, in other words, on Yudalad, on Yudalad, they had 
a little bit of the matzah left over. In the morning it stopped. We could say conceptually the mitzvah of eating matzah dragged on for 30 days until the 14th day of Iyar. That's why the Pesach Sheni matzah v'chametz. What's the Indian that on Pesach Sheni you have chametz and matzah? Be, make up your mind. You can't straddle both sides of the fence. Why chametz and matzah? To commemorate the very first Pesach Sheni where they had matzah left over from leaving Mitzrayim and they had the chametz of the new man. Says Rabbi Yaakov Amdin, Hare davar baror lefanecha. What I'm telling you is clear. Bimash loy amar by adam davar meoylam. Something that no one before me ever intimated even. And where did I get this from? Rebbeinu Shalom told me it was. Uh, I really know the man was chametz. He said they had the matzah together with the chametz of the man. Uh-huh. The chametz wasn't baked. The chametz ca- came down and it tasted whatever. You they want made chametz. The they made it. They made chametz. They made chametz. More like tofu. Nowadays, you know, nowadays people can't eat a, p- a pizza immediately after Pesach. Only seven days. So can you imagine then they had to eat matzah for thirty-seven days. Imagine as soon as the thirty-seven days were over, they started baking the first pizza on the midbar. So they had pizza and they had. And they had and they had matzah. Okay, says the Chassam Soifer. So that's the logic of Rabbi Yaakov Ender. Rabbi Yaakov Ender says a very amazing thing, and that is the matzah. The concept of Yitzias Mitzrayim was nimshach until the fourteenth day of Iyar, and therefore that's where the concept of Pesach Sheni comes from. It allows for a makeup because Yitzias Mitzrayim has not ceased. Okay, Chassam Soifer adds a thought. Look at number eleven. There's Chassam Soifer in Parshas Bahaloisra. You have to understand the reason of Pesach Sheni. We don't find anything of the sort by any other Mitzvah Sasei. There's no similar concept. Is there any Kedusha associated with this 30 day period then? That it's continuation of. Is there an obligation to eat matzah? No, I so mean, he said... So just that he ate the matzah, that it lasted the 30 days. The fact that that it's matzah lasted 30 days means in some dimension Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim is not over and that is a, some type of explanation for why the Rav Hashem gave a makeup. But we're going to... So now the question is... Do we say Tachman during these 30 days? Then you should have to... Uh, why would the makeup specifically be on the 30th day? Because that's when the man came. No, that's not what the Rav Yaakov Emden said. Rabbi Yaakov Emden says because the chal, because the matzah lasted for thirty days, and therefore Yitzias Mitzrayim was nimshach. What happened on the thirty-first day? They well, had let's the see. Matzah? Let's see. Well, well, it's not the thirty-first day. On that day is the thirtieth day. So, what happened? so listen to what Chassam Sofer says. Chassam Sofer says that this is a very, very fundamental concept, and I've seen this many times, and I've said it over many times, but every time I see it, it it's very powerful. Eh? And it's very inspiring also. And that is, that even though we're trained to think, and this is why the Chavos HaVavah says that you have to be very careful always to upgrade your understanding of Chumash, otherwise you're left your whole life with a preschool understanding. We are trained to think that the man was good. That it tasted good, and it was a very, right, whatever you wanted it to taste like, you could imagine it tasted like, Ice cream, chocolate, vanilla, pistachio nut flavor was unbelievable. That's not true. Sheker v'chazav. Not only, it, whoever, all these uh, kindergartens across the world are doing us a very big disservice convincing us that mun was good. Mun was terrible. Mun, so how can I say that? So the Chumash says, Vayancha vayaridecha. I pained you and I starved you. Can you and starve you? Chocolate ice cream, vanilla ice cream, pistache, whatever you want. The answer is, if anybody knows anything about anything, they know that most of food is the way it looks. Most of food, the Gemara says, a blind man will never be satisfied when he eats because he doesn't see the food. Most of food is a psychological process that more than satisfying your stomach, you satisfy your eyes. It's well known. It's Undisputable. More than satisfying your stomach, you satisfy your eyes. If I were to tell you, yeah, from now on for the rest of the life, you have to eat batteries. But don't worry. I hired a special culinary chef, and he cooked 
delicious food to look like batteries. And whatever you want it to taste like, you could taste like. You want a hot dog? Here. You want ice cream? Here. And whatever you want, I'll make you, but it tastes like a battery. It will look like a battery. After two days, you will have to um, place yourself in a mental institution. You could keep it. You would have to institutionalize yourself. You do that, you salivate every time. No, really. Battery. Really. Because I don't care what food tastes like. If it's not it's part of cube. it's a visual cue. Also, the yeah, way it's, it's the, whether it's chewy, whether it's soft, every food has a different sensation in your mouth. It's not just the taste. Crunchy. Food is a visual presentation. It's the way it feels in your mouth. The money, yeah, it tastes like anything. But it didn't look like anything. It was crystal clear. And that it's torture, 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 torture. After one day, you know, if there was a mental institution in the Midbar, it would be filled with 600,000 people. It was torturous. That's, I'm not making this up. This is what Rabbi Shem tells us. That's why they couldn't take it. They couldn't take it. Why did Hashem do this? It's practice for Kabbalah Satayra. Practice? What kind of practice is this? He says like this. He says, this is a famous concept of the Chassam Soifer that he got from his Rebbe the Hafla, that every human being has two sets of eyes. You have physical eyes, you have spiritual eyes. The more you indulge physical eyes, the less your spiritual eyes are able to perceive of Ruchnias. The more you give discipline to your physical eyes, the more your spiritual eyes are empowered to perceive. Okay? That's why the Hafla writes, what does the Gemara say about the baby in his mother's womb? He sees, May soifa oilam biyat soifa. He could see from one end of the world to the other end of the world. Why? Because the Gemara says, His eyes are closed! His eyes are closed. His ene hasechal are open. As soon as he comes out into the world and he opens his eyes, he can't see anything. He can't perceive anything anymore. He can't even see... A blind see. person from birth should theoretically be an amazing spiritual person. Possibly, but there are certainly very great mikubalim that were blind as a bat. No question. I know, I know of one. I know of one. I had my great-grandfather had a charusa in, in Europe. With my grandfather, I have many letters from him. Rabbi Yitzchak HaKoyin Huberman could not see. But he could see, you would not imagine what he could see in the whole world. There was a blind person in YU when I was there. It was amazing. He knew shots from left to right. And it was an amazing person. So, whether in every situation, I can't tell you. But there's a, this is the concept. The man, because it didn't have visual appearance, strengthened the Ene HaSeichel of Klal Yisrael for them to be able to be Mechabal the Torah. That's why the man was a preparation for Kabbal the Torah. Because it had no visual appearance. Now, I was... There's no question in my mind that in today's generation, the challenge of Shmira Sainayim is by far much more difficult than any other time in history. The way the immodesty in the world is such that what a kid, what a, what a boy, what a teenager is presented with today, it's almost, it's not, you know, it's the biggest challenge, I believe, in history. But you have to say, it's because because the amount of Torah available today and amazing wonders of the Torah that are available today, I don't think were ever available. The amount of sfarim and the amount of, of secrets that are now out in the open are unbelievable. So a person is able to discipline their eyes. I believe the Ibn it's, it's it's an equal playing field. It's an equal playing field. The reason I think why there's so many challenges is because somebody who is able to guard themselves, Ibn Shalom says, I will reward you. You'll, your eyes, the eyes of the Seicha will see much, much more than in the past. Okay, that's just my... Conjecture, but in any event, says the Chassam Seifer, the man which had no visual appearance prepared the Jewish people for Kabbalah Satayra. So, if we were to ask, what was the first time in history the Jews were Neskadesh, Kabbalah Satayra, right? Vav Sivan. But really, it's when the man started to fall. That's what sanctified them. When did the man start to fall? Pesach Sheni. 30 days after they left. And that's the, another concept of 
why Pesach Sheni is reserved for this mitzvah, because it already was stamped, it was etched in history as the beginning of the sanctity of the Jewish people through the falling of the month. What did it taste like? Exactly. Whatever you wanted it. It could taste like whenever you wanted it. So if you said that that's wrong. It, it, it tastes good, but it's still, it, first yeah, of all, psychologically it was a, you don't see anything. It doesn't, oh, it, oh, oh, oh. The, the way something looks, really. Oh, that's what you're saying. Let's say I tell you, eat, yeah, the, eat the table. It'll taste like whatever you want. I understand. Okay, you said that. I eat the carpet. I missed the point. Okay. Eat the bookcase. I hear you. Eat your car. So hard. Rebbe, but if we tried to tie in what you just yeah. said with what we learned, the fascinating shear we had on yeah. Friday, that by Matan Torah in Sivan, yes. right, when, they, when they were eating the matzah, they Israel were guilty of Chet Egel. Moshe broke the Lutos. And they, they they didn't really get that all well, that Matan Torah was for Bnei Israel and the second Matan Torah was for Moshe and Kaddish Baruch Hu, but Kaddish Baruch Hu was still kind of dilly dallying whether or not he was going to destroy the Bnei Israel. So how could we say that they would really his you? Then we should really say that Kaddish Baruch Hu decided he was going to continue the covenant on Yom Kippur, and we were kind of like in limbo during this period of time. Well, we sanctified ourselves, and then we plummeted. We had, uh, and mean, then we plummeted. We, had Mara, I mean, we, we had... fell. We fell. We fell. We fell. Okay, let's let's see the Chsam Sofer inside, and then I'll share with you. We'll see. If we could do two more things very briefly. Let's see. Look, look at number eleven. L'chara Yesh Lahavin Tam Hamitzvah Shel Pesach Sheni. Right, we read that. The Yesh Leimer on the fourth line, number eleven. The Kfar Be'yarnu Lamala. Shekedusha Gedoyla Kiblu Yisrael Aidei Achila Saman. Klal Yisrael received great kedusha by accept by eating the man. Shalhayu by Shum Kayach Gashmi. It had no physical power. Rakuloi Ruchni. It was completely spiritual. Vaafilu Shum Riya Gashmi Slayhayu by. It did not have even a physical Riya. Shalhayu Tayimim by Kamine Matamim. They were able to taste any kind of taste that they wanted. But they were not able to see it with their physical eyes. And by doing so, they empowered their spiritual eyes. Says the Chsam Seifer, had the Kla Yisrael not tasted the man in the Ugos that they brought out of Mitzrayim, they would not have been Zaycha to the Torah. The man began to fall on Tesvav Iyar. And therefore the Torah commands us to bring Pesach Sheni on Tesvav Iyar, which is the day that began Kedushas Yisrael. Okay, very interesting. Rabbi Sai. Only for the limited number of people who didn't bring the carbon the first time. It's right, not, but... This is not for the... Betty but that's just the fact that the man fell on that day is just symbolic that the day is already etched with a degree of Kedusha. A degree of Kedusha. Okay, I'll tell you another interesting thing about Pesach Sheni. And that is... Why did you say it was called Pesach Sheni again? Because it was second Pesach in the second month of the year. Okay, look at number 14, the Drasha Selech Sam Seifer. This is very interesting. The, the Pesach says, Yaakov lived in Mitzrayim 17 years, and it was the days of his life, 7 years and 140 years. Vayikrivu Yimei Yisrael Lamos, and the days of Yisrael approach dying. So one question you could ask is why in Pasuk Chavches is he called Yaakov, and Pasuk Chavtes he's called Yisrael. And what does it mean he lived in Mitzrayim 17 years, and then he had another 147 years? Well, we know that Yaakov Avinu was born on Sukkot, and he passed away on Sukkot. Right? We know Yaakov Avinu was born and died on the first day of Sukkot. But when did he go down to Mitzrayim? 17 years before he passed away. On Pesach. Okay. So if he went down to Mitzrayim on Pesach and he died on Sukkot, he cannot have been in Mitzrayim exactly 17 years, either 16 and a half or 17 and a half, right? We know, he again, he, was, he, di- he died on Sukkot, he came down to Mitzrayim on Pesach. So if that's the case, that there's something the, off over here. That, from the that what? What you just said when he was born and when he died? Well, he was born and he was died. It's from the Sefer Seder Hadaros, which is uh, 
Okay. A medrash, yes. We're talking about a difference between a spiritual death and a physical death. Okay, but... He, again, he came on Pesach, he died on Sukkot, so it's either 16 and a half or 17 and a half. So Sezach Samsa, are very interesting. Yaakov Avinu came down on Pesach, yeah? And he, until he settled, Chazal say, it was 30 days, until the 15th day of Iyar. Why? He came on Pesach, and that coming lasted 30 days. Why? The same way, like when, when, when we left Mitzrayim, the leaving of Mitzrayim, how long did it last? We said it really lasted 30 days. So too, when Yaakov came down to Mitzrayim, he came down to Mitzrayim, his coming lasted 30 days. So at what point in time did Yaakov really settle in Mitzrayim? Tesvav Iyar. From Tesvav Iyar until Tesvav Tishrei, is how many months? Five months. Iyar to Iyar to Sivan to Tammuz to Av to Elo to Tishrei. Five months. How many days are in five months? Malay Chaser, Malay Chaser, Malay Chaser. 147. 147. 147. Right? So it's like this. Vayichi Yaakov Be'eretz Mitzrayim Shiva Esrei Shana. 17 years. From when to when? From the 15th day of Iyar to 17 years later, the 15th day of Iyar. Okay? Because we know he didn't really settle until th- he came Pesach. We didn't settle until 30 days later. That's where 70 years... Did you say he died on the first day of Sukkot? He still died on the first day of Sukkot. But from, he lived in Mitzrayim 17 years from Tesav Iyar to Tesav Iyar. Aye, but now we have 147 days. Chazal also say that... The last days of the life of Yaakov Avinu, it was like he was living in Olam Haba. Every day of his life was like a year. The last five months. So it's the last five months. So it's like this. Yaakov Eretz Mitzrayim, Shiva Esrei Shana. He lived in time 17 years from Tesvav Iyar to 17 years later, Tesvav Iyar. And Vayihi Yimei Yaakov Shnei Chayav, the days of Yaakov that were like years, where Sheva Shan and Ma'ashana were 147, from Tesvav Iyar to Tesvav uh, Tishrei. And those days, Vayikrivu Yimei Yisrael, he was on the higher Madrega of Yisrael. But again, we see that already back in Mitzrayim, Tesvav Iyar was significant. Yaakov's coming ended on, right, on Pesach Sheni. Okay, let's end with one thing. Let's end with the tefillah. We say, Rabbi, so look at number 20, in the Haggadah Shal Pesach. Okay? We say, Zecher, Lemikdash, Kehillel. But I'll tell you a little secret. Hillel is Gematria 65. That's the name of Hashem, Aleph Da'an Nun Yud. Hillel, right? Zecher, Lemikdash, Kehillel. Also, 65 is, the Arizal says, Spiras Ha'imer, Rashi Tevois, Samache, 65, also the name of Hashem. Okay, that's just, just the added bonus. Okay? Then we say, Zechel Magdash Kehillah. Kein also Hillel Bizman Shvei Samagdash Ekeim. Hayo Koyrech, Matzo Mar, Vaichel Beyachad, Lekaye Mashanemar, Amatzois Umroyrim Yechlu. So, Sam Soifer asks in the Chuvis, you don't have it on the sheet, that Hillel is quoting the wrong Pasuk. Because twice in the Torah it says these these words Amatzis Mar Yechlu, but by Pesach Rishon it says U Matzis Al Meroyim Yechlu, right? U Matzis Al Meroyim Yechlu, and by Pesach Sheni it says Al Matzis Mar Yechlu. So why Hillel Bezman Shveis Amigshari Kayim would be saying would why are we invoking Pesach Sheni? Hillel did it by Pesach Rishon, okay? So this is a very famous question, Chassam Seifer asks, and you have a number 23, that when the Belzer Rebbe heard this question, that why, um, why is Hillel invoking the Pasuk of Pesach Rishon, and he gave the following answer. The reason why we invoke Pesach Sheni is because it's a tefillah. And the tefillah is we were not zoicha to bring Pesach Rishon this year. So we're mispalel, we're doing the kairich, and we're mispalel, now we want to have the zechus at least to be mekayim, likayim al matzus We would like to be mekayim this year, Pesach Sheni. 
So, Rav Yosef Shal HaLevi Natanzan, who certainly is a very big fan, fan of Pesach Sheni, right? He's the one who said not to say Tachnon. He said, what are you talking about? Only a Yachid is pushed off to Pesach Sheni. A Tzibur is not pushed off to Pesach Sheni. A Tzibur, that's Tameh, brings the Petumah. So, you can't say that it's a Tefillah that we want to bring Pesach Sheni. No, it's not a Tefillah. A Tzibur doesn't bring Pesach Sheni. A Tzibur only brings Pesach Rishon. Says of Elzareb, you have to know the Yushalmi. The Yushalmi in Pesachim on Samar Gimel Abbe says, when is the Tzibur not pushed off? That's when the Beis HaMikdash is standing and the Tzibur is Tame. They bring Pesach Rishon. But if the Beis HaMikdash would be built between Pesach Rishon and Pesach Sheni, Rabbi Yehuda Shita is then the tzibur would be makriv on Pesach Sheni. And therefore, in fact, it is a tefillah that we hope that the Beis HaMikdash should be built in between Pesach Rishon and Pesach Sheni. And then we'll be zoicha to bring the carbon Pesach on Pesach Sheni. Haba aleinu l'tayva. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.